Whoever thought we'd see a model for this guy? Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are taking a look at Sarek. The Silent King, the new Necron Supreme Baddie. I guess he's the, their Supreme Commander, huh? Uh, for the Necron Army, you know, new release. Never thought we'd see this guy, you know, because he's uh, the stuff of legend. It's crazy. Uh, $150 US is his price tag. Of course, you can always get your hobbies for less from Dicehead.com or Amazon. Now, this particular kit is not easy to build, believe it or not. Um, I know we actually said that on Spiky Bits. Uh, we looked at the sprues on the site, and there was a lot of slots and, and holes and things. And, it, you know, it seemed that it would be easy to build. But it turns out um, I'm going to call this easier to build at this point because it's it seems like, looking at the Marine and the other Necron stuff, uh, that... These kits are designed with um, elements to kind of help hold them together, whereas in the past, multi-part kits didn't quite do that. So I do like, you know, the way they're going was like the, the Chaplain on Bike was designed that way. I'm sure this guy is designed that way uh, to just kind of further aid in the, the assembly of the model, which is great because, you know, we, as we get more uh, technology on deck, for all this stuff you know it's really going to push the hobby forward and allow hopefully you know more people to to kind of um be able to assemble and participate in the hobby and not have you know those frustrations and things for um you know just not being able to put stuff together because i mean this is a big kit this is you know it's it's three sprues two of them are the same we've we've already seen them it comes with an instruction manual uh, i believe this is a 100 millimeter base i'll have to double check and 250s for the uh the stone things i forget what they're called but uh but yeah we'll take a look at the sprues in a second we only have to look at two of them because they're identical which probably means there's a lot of uh, similar assemblies in here that kind of reverse themselves and uh and, and lock together so starting off at the first page can already see a lot of that um assembly that i was talking about like reversing itself like this and this is the same piece just one on the other side of the other that's the same piece these are the same pieces uh, I don't know what this is, some sort of rudder or something. And then you got some thruster jets that all lock together and they give you the down uh, dorsal view right there, or ventral rather, I guess. Uh, over here, it looks like there's a larger thruster that goes on top and then more legs, which are symmetrical and taco catted. So whichever way you spell them, it's gonna be the same, which probably means a lot of these elements are on uh, the same sprue. Now, they only say sprue one, they're not splitting it up by sprue numbers. And actually we didn't get a sprue breakdown in, in here like they normally do, which is weird because normally we get the sprue breakdown. Hey, this is all the stuff in here, but I guess not. Uh, these steps also look to be all, you know, taco catted because they're left and right halves and then they just lock into each other. Even this piece right here, the little glowy effects, same deal. So it's, it's actually smart on Games Workshop's part to literally make this whole assembly most likely and I haven't really dug into the sprues yet, out of the same parts that are left and right, and then they just lock together. Uh, this looks to be the only one of its kind on here with a lot of symmetrical parts, literally two of the same pieces mashed together to make one assembly right here. It's kind of, it's very smart. It's very smart. I like it on Games Workshop's part um, to use the resources they have. And then here, two of these little pulpits, pulpits, whatever you call them, for uh, his little bodyguard duders. And then there's the Satan that powers this whole thing, which is probably on the one sprue that is separate. And then you've got, again, more symmetrical elements here. These, uh, what is that, Blackstone? Looks like some of the Blackstone, I got a little... <laughs> These were literally scarabs just crawling onto my uh, onto my instructions here. There's a little scarab bit in there. I don't know where they go. I guess I, guess I totally missed them. And more uh, Blackstone right here. And then left and right little um, danglies from War of the Worlds. So then at some point you get this assembly, which literally looks to be a lot of the same parts minus this duder up here. And then you get into the characters, which are probably not left and right halved. They're probably all on the same sprue if I had to guess. So there's Zarek. Um, I thought he was a little chonky. Didn't he have a cape? Okay, well, he looks to go together pretty straightforward. There's a torso, front and back arms. This is kind of weird how these lock into like the 
top of the shoulder rib cage or something. I don't know what that's about. And then armor on the back and then his head. What is this hot mess? So his little bodyguards, the Triarchal Pharons. I don't know what this is, but it looks like you have to make some sort of weird assembly with the arms on the front chest. And then this like is down at an angle. And then what are these little points here? Is this what supports the head? Those are the little, oh, those are the little traps, the little neck traps, holy cow. Oh, this is a disaster in the, in the making right here. I do not think this is gonna go together very well, this part right here. It's almost like the person that designed this, literally vehicle genius. The person that did this, I don't, I don't know. Like I see completely two different types of designs here and I'm worried about it. I am very worried about it. I don't like this. Let's see what else we got. Uh, and then the duders go onto the pulpits here. It looks like they have little cords or interfaces that lock into this thing back here. Yep, sure enough. And wait, what? So the cape, you know, the slices on the cape I get, we've seen this before, use your super thin plastic glue right here. Uh, the Tamiya stuff, this stuff is great because it'll fill these gaps and you won't have any problems. If you if you can't get it to work, you can always use some of this plastic putty, it'll harden. Um, and actually before it hardens, if you just take some little sculpting tools or something, you can actually uh, use a little water on them and just wipe it away and there won't be any, it won't recede, it won't, um, you know, uh, give up a gap or anything like that. It'll literally smooth out flush and that stuff's great. You might have to use that there. I don't know why you're going to glue the cape down to the, again, I don't get this. Like why, why is this like this? Like why would you glue the cape to the kit or to the vehicle? It doesn't even glue. Oh, they're saying to glue it. Okay. I guess I get what's going on here. Like you glue it to his, I don't even know, like what, I, I, I don't even know what's going on here. You're supposed to glue the, the Silent King down and then parts of the cape onto his tort. Oh, like his hip and his, I don't know about all this. Like this is, this is something else. So what is this? Okay. So these are the little triarchal, um, who's he, what's it? And it looks like they're the same pieces, so they'll probably be on the different sprues. I like that. They got little thrusters or something, and then the little uh, glowy bits are going to both lock onto these sides. So that makes sense. Okay, I get all this. I don't get the figures. I don't get the characters. What is going on with that? And then here's the uh, rules for the weapons and, and things in the uh, typical IKEA format that we've seen with 9th edition. So let's take a look at the sprues real quick before we dive into what I hope isn't too much of a of an assembly. Okay, so here's the duplicate sprue, just like we talked about. So it looks like some of the elements are duplicated for his bodyguards, which is cool. And you've got the, uh, the little uh, stone things. I mean, this kind of looks like a jumble of parts, but I can see like some of the steps and some of the risers Here's some of the parts for the um, the dudes and their rib cages, the glowy bits for these, the glowy bits for the actual, I think it goes in right here. So that I get, okay, that's cool. So there's two of those obviously, cause they're, you know, saving some cheddar on that. And, and this is, here, let's zoom in on this. Cause this is the money sprue. This is where all the characters are gonna be. So this is, the one sprue that's completely different. So it's got all his capes, all his uh, black stone on here, all the different parts that actually make his two bodyguards different. Um, his ax, close combat weapons, and that riser in the middle, it looks like, is also in here. So, oh, and the satan, of course. So the, all the stuff that is single bits or single assemblies is gonna be on this sprue right here. So three sprues, 150 bucks. Yep, do the math on that one, right? All right, well, let's uh, whew, let's get to it. Hopefully, it doesn't take longer than a night. And just like that, we're back. Well, at least that's how it looks to you, right? 
so I think one of the last things I said was, I hope it doesn't take longer to build than a knight. Um, so a knight titan, or imperial knight, whatever you want to call it, takes about three-ish hours to clean and build. Um, if you want to magnetize it, maybe another hour. So, so call it four hours, right? From, whoop, oh, there, there goes the silent king. Um, from start to finish. This kit took about six hours to clean and assemble. It is the worst kit I've ever put together for Games Workshop. If you are a beginner or new to the hobby, please have someone help you put this kit together. If you are a parent buying this kit for, you know, one of your kids, please help them with this kit. This kit is no joke. It has some really good parts and it has some dumpster fire parts. And the dumpster fire parts are very, very apparent very quickly um, as you get into the build. So I'm disappointed with this kit because for the price, well, first off, let's talk about a couple things. Everybody, when we said this might be easy to build, everybody kind of lost their mind. They're like, oh, you know, I want this kit. I want to feel like, you know, I built it and a sense of accomplishment. And I get that. I really do. And then, you know, I was talking to a lot of folks and, you know, we posted the comments on, on Spiky Bits and people were like, yeah, easy build. That's crap. You know, uh, for the money I, I want, I want an actual kit. You know, I want something I can build and maybe customize. And I get that. I do. I, I see both sides of it. But I just spent six hours on this kit. That's six hours. I like to think I'm pretty good at building kits. I've probably built just about every kit from Games Workshop they've ever made, for at least for Warhammer, and a lot of the Fantasy, and a lot of the Sigmars, or 40K rather. Um, this is by far the worst I've ever put together. And let me show you, let me just save you, let me just save you some time here and your sanity. Everything's pretty much good. You know, you're gonna have to do your work and, and trim all this stuff. And everything is really good. And I'm going to show you the assemblies here so you don't glue stuff down by accident and then can't uh, paint it later. But everything's good up until you get to the duders. And I kind of noticed this when we were talking just a few minutes ago to you, but, you know, hours ago to me, is this is straight dumpster fire. Um, I get what they were trying to do with these. But look, using open sockets and, and first of all turning it against the grain of what we would expect to see as instructions is just bad it's bad directions like they teach us in school don't do this when you're doing exploded views and you're doing instructions this is bad another thing that's bad is these you're literally making this like open-faced assembly that's supposed to support all this weight and really like you put it into here and it's supposed to support all this weight and then this back half which is kind of a hunchback is supposed to clamshell the arms together uh for his little um uh, bodyguard dudes and then that is supposed to hold at the perfect angle and then the little neck traps the little pointy bits are supposed to come up and shoot up into his head and everything is supposed to line up a hundred percent perfect the chances of that happening on the first try with this assemble with these instructions is pretty much next to zero. And if you get it, like you, you, uh, I mean, I got mad props for you because you are amazing. And I'm not saying it, I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying it'd be very difficult to do. So what I recommend is when you get to these steps, just build this part, this stuff down here first so that you can have this assembly up here kind of ready to go and just put a little glue in there. And I used, I used this super thin stuff. I do not recommend using regular super glue on this because the chances of making a mess are probably pretty great. And once you have this back half ready to go and your front half and just roughly supported the arms, you can kind of squeeze them together and get them to lock and get those little neck traps to kind of line up to where the head is supposed to be. And then while you're kind of holding holding it, pinching it, you can kind of put the head on it and kind of line up because the heads are actually gonna kind of look um, a certain way. Like this dude's looking this way and he is to the left and the other dude's looking the other way, right? No, oh, there goes the cape. So that's my biggest recommendation. Um, Sarek is mostly okay. Uh, I would recommend putting, doing the same thing, having the back ready to go with the front, but it's not nearly as obnoxious as his two bodyguard guys, uh, for sure. 
And then um, I don't get any of this assembly back here. Like I would not glue down this cape to the the assembly at all. Um, but see, here's the thing. Like I don't think it's made to, you're supposed to like lock, see there's those little nubs right there which you're supposed to lock them in. And that's where, uh, that's where he's supposed to kind of attach to everything. But it kind of doesn't work very well unless you kind of, you can hold it and you can kind of get it there. But I would definitely recommend painting the cape before you did any of that and gluing it in. And it's funny and I get this and I really like, um, I really like this idea is that maybe it's like, see these balls, these uh these points of contact kind of line up on um, Sarek right here, so it's almost like he's using like electromagnets or something to kind of like just straight up like gangster mode his cape around him, like it's like it's just an orbit around him, which is dope. I love that idea, um, but in the practicality of it and lining all these things up and getting them to work a hundred percent is again it's very difficult. And if you are a beginner, you're gonna you might struggle with this kit and you know and that's unfortunate because it's such an expensive kit so let me show you some other stuff so i'm probably not going to show you a picture of this assembled but i can show you some of the assemblies to give you an idea of how big it is just because the way it is um it's very hard to kind of um hold it and and there's a reason for that and there's a good reason for that so whoever designed this you are amazing, first of all. Uh, let's talk about that. Because the assemblies that went together on this are, are crazy, okay? So let me try to hold this against gravity. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm sorry I'm taking so long on this. I just think it's really important if you spend all your hobby dollars on something like this that you get it right, okay? This can go together relatively easy. Just kind of slow it down and, 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 and take it slow. But what you might want to do is put it together in assemblies. And it's actually very easy to do. And there's no magnets, there's no um, blue tack or anything holding this together. It's actually relatively sturdy. So this is an assembly, basically. And it just goes, it goes together on the bottom with these little nubs. Now you could put a magnet right there for 100%. Like if you wanna transport this, I would definitely do something like that. I don't have time to put a magnet in because I just spent six hours building this. But you could 100% put a magnet right there and lock it in right here and you would be good to go. It also, right here, I think, it puts some of its weight on the back so you don't have to super worry about it. Oh no, it's right there. So it puts some of its weight down on the back which isn't a big deal at all um, whatsoever. So, the, so then there's that. And then you have the room to put all the duders in here and they actually kind of sock it in right here but I would definitely paint those first for sure. Uh, the satan you're probably going to want to paint all glowy and stuff so there's no really reason to leave him off although you could uh you just don't glue this part right here i glued it on because uh i figured there would want to be glow over the metal effects and that's uh probably okay now down here when you put this together you actually don't have to assemble this part right here so your little glowy bits actually sock it into here just fine and boom it supports itself and it supports this and it's good to go and i really like a lot of the design elements on here like there's little scarabs crawling all over the place on this thing even underneath the stairs there's little scarabs like they did a really good job on this um on his little war altar pulpit thing whatever it's called but i just feel like they could have done better a lot better on on the the characters because that's kind of what makes you know all of this uh the coolest thing right is is characters like vehicles are cool and, and i get it and that's what's really 40k but if you spend all this money on a special character you you want the characters so here's how here's how tall the uh the little stone things are they're pretty cool they go together super easy uh no big deal there and then here's how kind of how everything lines up like there's uh there's just a overlord from the indominus box uh here's the regular walker from the indominus box so not quite as tall and then here's the super walker the new push fit one um from that just came out this week the doomsday one so still not quite as tall so it's and we haven't seen a monolith yet but i'm hoping that um with no uh, figures on it that it won't be uh kind of the dumpster fire uh figure adventure that we just went on 
uh, and it'll be the sweet ass like vehicle, super modular, everything goes together. Hey, this all makes sense. Um, that is this part right here, which I really, really think is cool. And it's nice to see Games Workshop um, really kind of advancing the technology and um, just the design of their miniatures in general, because nobody else is doing shit like this. So let's be honest, it's, it's pretty dope. So sorry if it was a little ranty. Um, I just feel like it was very important to kind of cover because I don't see folks doing stuff like this. And I feel like it was very important that I conveyed that uh, to you, know, you guys as I try to bring the realness when I can. So that is it uh, for this one overall. It's a decent kit, but you will spend some serious time on this um, and you know, try not to get frustrated. And definitely if you can, uh, try to have someone help you if you don't feel confident in putting it together. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can always get your stuff for less from Amazon or Dicehead.com. I'll put some links in the description and the comments field too and other hobby supplies, stuff like this you can find and you know all the other stuff we, we use here literally every day. So um, drop us a, a subscription and uh, make sure you turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.